So, who is familiar with the idea, the concept of parallel realities? Raise your hand. Who is not familiar with it? Cool. Good. Okay. Well, this is one. And 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 this is one. Every moment that you have an experience, you're quite literally experiencing an alternate reality. Things have changed. Now the assumption is that things change within the same linear consistent reality, but that's not actually true in my experience. So it's not that there is one reality within which your molecules actually move around, so to speak. We're not in one same, we're not in the one same linear reality within which the objects move around independently. Every change is a complete change. Every change is a complete shift. Every motion, every movement is a completely different reality. That means that there's many different realities between my hand being over here and my hand being over here. But consciousness can config, configure those realities or can view those realities so seamlessly that it seems like it's one continuous reality. When in fact, I'm in one reality, 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 one reality et cetera, constantly, consistently. That in a nutshell is the idea of parallel realities. Now one very important thing that comes with this understanding is that your sense of time starts to become completely different. When you really understand the concept I just briefly touched upon, and I'll explain some more, the thing that disappears is linear time. It doesn't completely disappear. It can still be there. It's still there, but you see that it is an illusion. You see that it is a projection. You see that it is an agreement. The idea that there is linear time is an agreement. It's not an actual physical, mechanical, energetic fact of the universe. So the idea of parallel realities brings with it the idea of nonlinear time. Or from another point of view, you could say timelessness. The fact that there is not linear time. So take consciousness, just to start with. You are conscious of my voice, are you not? Are you not? Yes. Thank you. So, you are conscious of my voice. You're conscious of your body sitting in the chair that you're sitting in. Has there ever been an experience where you were not conscious of that experience? Have you ever experienced a reality without consciousness? No. Good. All right. So everything that ever existed has only appeared to or inside of your consciousness. Just like the entirety of your dream at night, even though it may seem out there, even though it may seem like you're visiting actual places, it's all happening inside of your consciousness. Reality is exactly like this. So you've never experienced, no one has ever experienced, no consciousness has ever experienced a reality outside of its own consciousness. That's because there is none. There is no reality outside of consciousness. There is no projection, there is no experience outside of consciousness. Or another way of saying that is, nothing exists independent from consciousness. Objects do not have beingness. Appearances do not have existence on their own. They depend on consciousness. Just like the experiences, again, in your dream at night. They don't have beingness of their own. They don't have existence of their own. It's not that they exist and you go visit them and then you leave and then they still exist. You project that you're going somewhere, but that's all happening inside of absolutely still motionless consciousness. So you are the center of the universe. That's the basic idea. That's the basic realization that you can have. I won't go too deeply into that now because that is a whole different topic in and of itself. And I'm kind of assuming you have some kind of familiarity with that if you've come to my meetings before. But basically, just assume, even if you don't believe it's true for now, just assume 
that consciousness, which is what you are, which is what is listening to my voice, which is what you cannot escape, no matter how hard you try, you can run away from this meeting, you'll still be conscious. You can be hit by a car, you'll still be conscious. You can go talk to your mother, you'll still be conscious. Maybe a little less conscious, but you'll still be conscious. So consciousness is always there. Every experience you have meets inside of consciousness, inside of you. You can never change you. You can never leave you. You are inescapable. You as consciousness, you as awareness, you as the witness are inescapable. You as sentience, as beingness, are inescapable. You can feel into that for a moment if you stop thinking for two to five seconds. Just stop thinking. Give away all your thoughts. And notice the space that remains, the clarity, the consciousness that is still here, the I am that still exists. The very obvious, overwhelming sense, I exist, exists whether you're thinking or not thinking. But when you're not thinking, it becomes very clear that I exist, exists independent from everything that appears. Regardless of what appears, you exist, right? Okay, so consciousness can never be escaped. And it's the ground of all experiences. It's the meeting point of all experiences. So now that you know that consciousness is the meeting point of all experiences, in fact, it's the center of the universe, you can start to imagine that within this consciousness, there is the availability of infinite possibilities infinite possible configurations of energy, as I call it. Energy, which is one of the aspects of consciousness, consciousness energy, can shape itself into whatever is possible. So on a universal cosmic infinite scale, everything that can ever exist already does exist. Any possible configuration of energy that can ever be made or created already exists. Where you shift your consciousness into determines your experience. And so consciousness sets itself up in such a way in this life, in this experience that you're having right now, that it creates or that it shifts into a reality, a view of reality that then looks very similar to the previous one and then very similar to the previous one and then very similar to the previous one. It does this so that it can have an, the illusion, it can generate the illusion of a linear timeline. But in fact, every single nanosecond is a completely 100% different new reality. Not new because it already existed, but new to you from your point of view, from your I am consciousness. So you don't move around inside of an actual world. You change worlds every nanosecond inside of you. Does that make sense? Okay. So one way to imagine this is to take the example of a movie, when you go and watch a movie. Now you know that a movie consists of images, no? Each image is its own complete 100% reality. One picture has no relationship whatsoever to the next picture, even though it looks very much alike. But you can cut them in half, you can take one picture, bring it to China, put the other one in a space shuttle and send it all the way to the other side of our galaxy. They have no relationship whatsoever. Even though they look so similar, the only thing that changed is the motion of a finger, the movement of a finger. So one picture, the actor's hand is over here. In the next picture, his finger slightly moved. That is, from a visual point of view, the only difference between these two images. However, from the point of view of the image itself, it doesn't know what it looks like. And all it knows is that it's its own complete reality and that its molecules have no relationship to the molecules of the previous image, what we call previous image. So you see, it's up to the observer to create a sense of time. Based on this image and then this image and then this image, we as the observer of one image to the next image to the next image can say that there is a previous and a next image. We can say that this came first and then that appeared. First my hand was over here and then it moved over there. From the perspective of the hand, nothing ever changed. Because there is only one hand in that particular reality. The one that is slightly more over to the left 
it is a completely 100% different reality that has no notion whatsoever of the other parallel reality. Does that make sense? So you can see that if you were to slow down a movie, a motion picture, which is what it is, a motion picture, picture in motion, and that is what life is too, you would see that you could freeze a segment. And what would that look like? What does one complete reality look like? If you would not shift automatically into the next reality, it would look like everything was absolutely frozen. Hypothetically, you can keep your consciousness in one such picture. It's not really relevant for most people to experience that. But it is hypothetically possible <laughs> that you could slow down that process to the extent where all you're aware of is one timeless, total configuration of universal energy. So, every time you change, which is all the time, your reality changes. It's a con it's a constant reflection of who you are. It's a constant reflection of the frequency of your consciousness, the state of your consciousness, the point of view of your consciousness. So right now, again, you're in a 100% completely different reality than you were in 10 seconds ago, even a nanosecond ago. But to make it more obvious, 10 seconds ago, that was a completely different universe. This is a completely new reality. This is a completely new reality. This is a completely new reality. And so what does that do to the idea of time? It actually makes it malleable, it makes it yours. It makes it influenceable. Instead of this static, projected, externalized idea that you are somehow a victim of. Suddenly time as an actual linear idea starts to seize in your mind, in your consciousness. And when a certain belief system starts to seize in your mind, then all the limitations that came with that belief system start to seize for your experience. So the more fully you understand this, the more fully you will be able to influence time before, because the more fully you'll be able to totally experience and know and see how reality is actually structured, how it actually works. And when you see very clearly how it works, you can start to actually using the consciousness that is already master of your universe anyway. You can start utilizing that more consciously to generate certain results or effects, if you so desire, if that is relevant for you. So time literally does not exist because every reality is completely timeless. It exists with no time. Every potential one moment experience, one complete snapshot of the universe, exists eternally, has always already been there, will always be there. So your reality does not change. You shift into different realities. Therefore, you generate the experience of change, the experience of time. But time is only an experience. It's not a mechanical, structural fact. Does this difference make sense? Can you see how time is subjective? It's not actually objective. And when you realize time is subjective, interesting things start to happen. We could just generally call that acceleration. It's the acceleration of your understanding of who you are, of the power that you are, the consciousness that you are. And you start to embody these ideas much more. You start to embody the power of consciousness much more. And you'll be able to actually influence in that sense the time frame, or the not so much the time frame, but the, the reality that you choose to experience next for yourself. So if you understand reality consists of individual times, and one way to visualize this is to imagine a floor, just imagine this floor being absolutely blank, absolutely empty, except for pictures. So there's endless rows of pictures filling up this room. So everywhere you look, there's a picture. Now, if you start at the top left corner of the room, of the floor, you see the picture of your birth. And if you go all the way back to the picture in the down right corner of the room, you see the picture illustrating your death and everything in between there. 
if you realize that this is the way reality operates, you can start to make changes. You can start to make changes to your past. You can start to make changes to your future. You can start to therefore experience a different present. Why? Because you realize that the present is the key to experiencing time in the way you wish to experience it. Because what is the present? If all pictures already exist, if all potential possible configurations of energy already exist, then there's no time in that. There's no choice in that. There's no freedom in that. The freedom lies in the present, which is the present. What is the present moment? If everything already exists, future already exists, past already exists, then what is the present? The present is you. You are the present. You are the now. You, your consciousness is now, is it not? That is all that's ever going to be now. The reality you experience right now already existed 100 trillion billion years ago. That's right, this conversation already took place. In fact, it's happening still, and tomorrow it will still be happening. That is because consciousness essentially, on its most fundamental level, which again is not relevant for most people to experience, nevertheless it's the truth, there is no time whatsoever. So in a sense, the Big Bang, what the Big Bang is, the Big Bang is the explosion that caused all possible realities that could ever potentially be created to be created at an instant, at once. Everything was created at once. You're not actually creating anything new in terms of a new configuration of energy. If you build a sandcastle in a particular way, it may be beautiful, we could call it art, and it is, but you're not creating something that did not exist before. What you're doing, though, is you're generating a new relationship with the structure that already existed in your future, and you have now made that manifest in your now. Again, what is the now? The now is your consciousness. So what does it mean to manifest your reality from this point of view? To manifest your reality simply means to shift your consciousness to a vibration where it will um, let the picture fall into the, into the projector screen. You know these old um, picture slides? You know those diagram, how do you call those things? You know those tiny little things and you go like, <coughs> just slides? Okay, cool. So, and you allow a different slides, slide to fall into your projector beam. So every time you change your state of being, you will start to see significant changes in the slides that fall into the slot of your projector, of your consciousness. The slides already existed. Just because you made one manifest now and you removed the other one does not mean the other one does not exist. Because you see, you cannot take anything away from existence. You can't take something out of existence. And you can similarly place something into existence. Because where would it come from? So everything that can ever exist already exists, cannot be removed and cannot be added to. Everything you can come up with that you think you could add to existence has already been thought of at the moment of the Big Bang and has already been created. Now this Big Bang thing is just a symbol. So you can't remove anything from existence. That includes your past experiences. That includes all other possible past experiences that you chose not to have, which is infinite. There's endless different pasts that belong to you in a sense or could have belonged to you. They still exist as well. Your past still exists as well. You cannot take a potential reality, a potential manifestation of energy away from the universe. You can't do that. You see, so structurally speaking, there is no time. Nothing new is ever created. Everything that can exist already does exist. Not only everything that can happen will happen, but everything that can exist already does exist and will always exist. Anything that can exist will always already exist. So knowing this, your sense of time starts to become a little warpy, a little weird, because it takes all human perspective away, everything you're used to in that sense. But it opens you up to a way more empowered way of actually living your life, a more divine way of living your life, a more empowered conscious way to live your life and influence what we call the experience of time. So when you change the frequency of your light, of your consciousness, of your now, of the present moment, and for lack of a better word, we could call that your vibrational attitude. So just very briefly, your vibrational attitude is simply 
how you view yourself in any given moment, how you experience life in any given moment, how you experience yourself, what your state of being is like, what you are in a sense emitting, the energy, the frequency of your being, the state of your consciousness, that is your vibrational attitude. We all know this, we all constantly have a vibrational attitude, that's why we constantly generate a particular slide out of the field of all that is, to fall into our particular slot of I am consciousness, our particular view of reality is now filled with a particular slide because we were vibrating at a certain speed of consciousness, at a certain rate of energy. And everything that we perceive always matches our frequency. Because in that sense, physical reality is just like a mirror. It doesn't actually do anything to you. It's not actually set in stone for you. All it ever does is reflect you all the time, all the time, all the time. It's reflecting you. It's mirroring your state of being, your vibrational attitude, your consciousness. Your particular configuration of consciousness turns into a particular configuration of experience or reality or perception. Does this make sense so far? Yes. Awesome. So how do you influence time? Well, you don't actually influence time because time does not exist. So it's just a way of saying, how do you shift into an alternate universe? How do you more consciously shift into a parallel reality? Because, remember, you're already doing this right now, otherwise you could not hear my voice move from the first letter of my sentence to the last letter of my sentence. You would be stuck at one letter at one thing. So all the time you are creating your reality, you are shifting from one reality to one reality to one configuration of energy, to one configuration of the universe, to one potential creation. You're constantly doing this on automatic pilot. It's great, it's fantastic. It allows you to be the victim of your own creation so that you can have the subjective experience of the illusion of time, the illusion of a particular personal theme that goes from A to Z. But in reality, you are generating that for yourself. You are creating that. It's not actually the case. There's not just one life that you can live, that you are living. You're not stuck in this one life. You never have been. There's infinite parallel lives that look very similar, and there's infinite parallel lives that look nothing like who you are today. And my intention is to help you understand that you can become there for anything you desire to become. And you are not stuck in the conditioned reality that you have been given by your previous choices and your previous creations. You can understand this principle to such an extent that six months from now, if you start to, even if this is the first time you hear about this principle, six months from now, even sooner, but I'll be liberal just so that you start to believe a little bit of what I'm saying, because I noticed there's a lot of new people today. If you truly understand this principle and you start practicing what I'm sharing, six months from now, you will not recognize yourself. I guarantee you. You will not be able to recognize yourself. You will look back upon pictures, you'll maybe see a video of yourself, and you'll be like, oh, who's that guy? Who's that person? What do they have to say? You'll start forgetting things, which is a good thing, by the way, because it allows for so much space for new things, you see? It doesn't mean that you actually necessarily forget things. If someone brings up a memory, you can still tap into that. Perhaps sometimes not, depending on how distant that reality is to your present frequency of being. But in general, you start to simply become more slippery. You start to become more empty, more free, more available for your present now to become whatever you desire it to become. You stop living in the illusion of a linear reality that has a given past and a given future, and you start waking up to the fact that there is no time, there only is now, and that you can insert into the field of now whatever vibratory pattern you wish to insert, whatever vibrational attitude you wish to carry yourself with. And then as you start doing that, you start to see that reality warps around you, not the other way around. You are in that sense a god, you are in that sense a creator. You are not a victim, you are not a slave, you are not a beggar. You have created this reality already. I'm not teaching you anything new. Again, if you did not already perfectly know how to do this, you would not be able to follow this conversation. You'd be stuck in time, in one moment in time. 
but effortlessly so you choose, alongside with me and all the people here, to generate some sort of a consensus parallel reality, parallel reality, parallel reality, doo -doo 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 -doo, and we're all moving because our frequencies, our alignment is in alignment. Our vibrations are similar enough to where we can generate the illusion of a consensus reality that moves from the start of this meeting to the end of this meeting two hours later. All the while, all that's happening is that we're now and we're projecting a different image and a different image into the now, into the now, into the now, into the now. And we're picking our images out of a field of infinite parallel probable realities. This is the one you chose. In another one, I'm saying something else to you right now. But you chose this particular one because it's relevant for you. Now, I'm not saying that you're doing this with your conscious brain self. You can more and more participate, co-create with your brain self, with your in a sense, lower consciousness, shall we say, or person consciousness, or I am here now consciousness. But for most people, this has been given away completely to quote unquote their higher self, their higher consciousness. Consciousness has infinite levels as well. So you're experiencing yourself at the level that you assume yourself to be at. If you start assuming yourself to be at a very, very high level of consciousness, you will start to actually become that level of consciousness and you will start to be able to influence your particular timeline, not your time, but your timeline, the illusion of a timeline that you generate by going from this picture to that picture, back to this picture, to that picture, to that picture, that, 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 that. You see, that one particular line literally is your timeline based on every slide that you chose. If you chose one image next to it, and then two images next to the next one, and then three images next to the one that you otherwise would have chosen, then your timeline would have looked different. Maybe slightly so, but still. 100% so from the reality of the picture itself. You had chosen a 100% different reality if you choose picture B, which is right next to picture A, and all that's different is the placement of one single atom from the position, from the place, from the vantage point of that reality itself, that is still 100% completely independent, rea independent reality from the other reality that has all the similar frequencies except for that one atom. It's still a 100% different reality. You could take one over to China and one to the other end of the galaxy. They would still exist as their own selves. They have no structural relationship whatsoever. Your past has no structural relationship to your present whatsoever. Five seconds ago has no relationship to this second whatsoever. My hand is not over here because it came from here. My hand is always going to be over here. And here it's always going to be over here. And here it's always going to be over here. And it was never moving. It was never on its way from here to here. I shifted my consciousness to this reality, and then the one where it's timelessly here, then timelessly here, then timelessly here, then timelessly here, then timelessly here. So you could call these the flickers of reality, the flickering on and off of reality. And there's even sciences or scientists and um, you know ancient yogis and rishis that have said the same thing. They say that basically the universe turns on and off in terms of consciousness. It turns on and off all the time, but so fast. It's like a flickering light switch, but it happens so fast that we do not perceive it. So in one moment, one potential configuration of energy becomes active. And then the very next nanosecond, another potential reality becomes active. Just imagine literally taking the light switch of this room and going so fast to the point where all you see is continuous light. But really that's not what's happening. And you can see that with certain types of light where the frequency of it going on and off is so low that you have a sense, you even get a headache sometimes, you have a sense of it flickering in and out or all television screens where the hertz is at a lower frequency than you can perceive. You will see that half of the time there is no reality, there is no experience, there is no light. And then half the time it's on again, off, on, off, on, off, off. Similarly, if you increase your frequency, your perceptual frequency, you will start to discover more of the illusion of the flickering in and out of existence of your higher self's creation. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay. Yes, I can. Yes. Nice. 
Me too. What did I say? <laughs> oh, yes, the flickers. Yes, thank you. So when you increase your perceptual frequency, the vibration, the vibratory state of your now, when you increase that vibration, which to us is known, physically speaking, as happiness, as joy, as excitement, as bliss, as ecstasy, as inspiration, as creativity, as feeling like you're on top of life instead of underneath it. So anything that in that sense it gives you a great sense of joy is anything that aids you in increasing your vibration, your vibratory state, your vibrational attitude. When your vibrational attitude increases, literally what happens is that your supposed point on the ladder of infinite levels of consciousness, where you place yourself, goes up the ladder, goes up the ladder, goes up the ladder. And every step that you take higher, every time you increase your frequency or your vibration in that sense, those are just words, but feel into what I'm saying. Every time you expand yourself, every time you know yourself to be more God and less victim, more creator and less slave, more on top of life and less underneath some kind of heavy piano, you change the frequency literally of your proposed consciousness to become more of another level of consciousness which also already existed, was also already operational, but you simply were not aware of it from your point of I am, from your sense of identification of who you are. So every time you increase that, you start to see a new reality, a different reality, and you start to gain access to more and more of your innate power to actually influence your reality. This. As long as you suppose yourself to be the victim, as long as you assume yourself to be the victim, you will only get victim power, which is very limited. It's intelligent. Higher consciousness will never give full creation power to the victim because it would destroy the universe in a sense. It would go mad, it would go crazy. But if you increase your frequency to the God level that you already are, then you can start to see some real changes in your life and in your ability to actually positively affect the course of your timeline, extract more benefit from the experiences that you've already generated for yourself, increase the speed at which you move through your theme, through your lifetime's theme of exploring a certain kind of idea, which is why you're here, to explore something, to become something, to express something, to share something, to learn something. Now, the more you assume yourself to be the victim of your own creation, the more static you'll be, like eyes. The more you increase your frequency, as the molecules start heating up and they start dancing in the eyes, it starts to melt. And the H2O becomes more malleable, becomes more empowered. Similarly, when you increase your frequency and your molecules start dancing up and down with joy, with excitement, with passion, with knowing that you're God, knowing that you are the creator of your reality, knowing that you are the chooser of your universe, knowing that you are the eternal now which is in total control of its next picture, then you start to become more empowered to actually make changes until you turn into steam, in a sense, which represents non-physical consciousness, which represents much more full remembrance of who you actually are, what you're here to do, and you can then move faster, move faster. Eyes cannot move fast. Have you ever seen a glacier move? Yeah? No? Oh, it's, it's pretty, thank you, yeah. Oh yeah, it's pretty slow. So, have you ever seen steam move? It's pretty fast can go anywhere. Similarly, you can start to move really fast, meaning that you start to learn from your lessons because you gain access to higher intelligence, higher form of reasoning. Your mental body becomes the higher mental body in a sense. You start to understand things. You can start to see things from a higher, grander perspective and so things fall into place that much quicker for you. You can see a certain scenario with certain people in it and certain emotions or thoughts arise in yourselves and in them and in an instant you can know what's going on. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to think it through. In an instant you know what's happening and so you can move on to the next thing. What is the solution? In an instant you know what the solution is. Well, how should I behave right now to most positively accommodate this scenario of these 10 people's dynamics? And you got the answer. That's how you do it. 
and then that, and then that, and then that. So you learn super fast, you act super fast, you act in an empowering way, in a beneficial way. You start to actually become intelligent, as man is supposed to be. You become less and less like a sheep, and more and more like a lion, an intelligent one, like a leopard. You become intelligent. You become fast. You're no longer helpless. You're actually creating. And you're actually being of benefit to yourself and everyone else. Rather than just unconsciously going about your day, being slapped around by your thoughts, by your emotions, by your vibrations, not knowing who you are, sending out to the universe, to your universe, to your creation, all kinds of mixed ideas and frequencies, not having a clue of what you're here for, which is all fine and perfect. And no one is necessarily to blame for that. There's no blame. There's no judgment. But it is helpful to observe this and to let that inspire you to say no to that mode of being. And this all depends on how much you care about your existence. If you don't care very much, then that's fine. And you can keep being sheep, like you can keep being a victim. However, if you care about being alive, if you're excited about the potential that this incarnation, that this creation offers you, then you start thinking, then you start asking questions, then you start coming to meetings like these. And then when a little brat like me tells you that maybe there is an even higher step you can take for yourself, you take it. You fucking take it. Because you care about your life. Because you care about not just going through it unconsciously with the biases that you've been taught by society and what's moral, what's not moral, what your daddy taught you, what your mommy taught you, living in fear of rejection and living in the seeking of love. You start actually acting consciously and you start actually taking control of your own vibratory state. And when you do that, life becomes enjoyable. Hi there. Hello beings. Hello guys. So today I'm going to explain you the method, the technique on how to teleport. For real. Let's go. So, first of all, I'm gonna explain you. My name is Ivo Arthur, and I have two, two channels. This is WoW TV, we are all one. And the other one, I post all musics, the spiritual music, like for your spiritual awakening in frequencies and vibrations. So, I'm gonna let the link here. So, you're gonna pass there to help you activate this teleportation. But, first of all, I'm gonna explain you my experience, first experience of teleporting. Uh, it's been not since a while ago that I'm desiring even more to teleport. So, all comes from our feelings. And I had several videos explaining what's how it works, the dimensions and all this, to understand how we can fully achieve and activate this uh, teleportation or anything else that is in the fifth dimension, because teleportation is from the fifth dimension. So I'm gonna let the link also here, you pass there to understand, so I'm not gonna enter, if not, it's, it's not this tema. The tema is how to activate or how to teleport okay for real first I'm gonna tell you my experience so <clears throat> I was driving and I was like already 16 hours without sleep and I was driving during the night and I was making a long run um, and I was driving and I was very tired but at the same time I was already in this dream awake uh, state okay and I was only on the second time knowing this this road okay and there was nobody in the street and it was like 2 a.m. and it was all dark I could only see with the light and the moon was not so bright and there was a little stars but you could not see far away 
So I was seeing only the lights of the car till the darkness of the night. So in the middle path of these two, I was like driving and I was focusing on this line between the light and the darkness. So I was like in the middle path and that remembered me how life works because we cannot be too much enlightenment or we cannot be also too much darkness so we have to be a little bit in the middle path to understand and to go through because the yin yang it's also so like you can only control this third third dimension if you can walk on the bridge between the enlightenment and the darkness the light and the dark and I was focusing this line and that remembered me also the past and the future so the middle was the present moment of now so I was driving and focus on this line like I was focusing and <coughs> suddenly it put me together with my breathing I was not focusing on my breathing I was just focused on this line but like I was not really focused as I was just in this line because when you are a little bit like in the dream awake you are like you are out of you so you are out of your mind you are completely out of your mind you don't have time to think so you are only on your feelings like you are dreaming okay and I was on this line and so then suddenly it happened that my breath matched with the folk the present moment of now because our breath is our is also the very present moment of now it's the most present moment of now you can ever imagine because we are always breathing so the breathing it's what makes us return to the present moment of now and i was on this line and then suddenly i i had the thought that it's still it's still missing 30 kilometers i don't know how many miles to arrive at home and <clears throat> there was cures also and all but I was like already automatic driving I was not really there I was on this line and suddenly it happened to me to close the eyes but once I closed the eyes I opened instantaneously so it was like oh no sleep huh? I'm driving but in this reopen the eyes <laughs> I was like only five kilometers for home and then I and then I continue to drive and then I said hey what the fuck I'm already here I don't remember to be here already and I was continuous driving on this line again so it was like nothing happened but I knew when I look around it was already I already passed all this, so I, it was missing only some curves and I would be at home already. So I had like 30 minutes, so one minute per kilometer, and suddenly I looked the time, it's like I jumped, I really jumped, but I was not like, what the fuck, huh? Only in the reopen the eyes, so what I'm telling you is that the teleportation happens in a... In a in a flash of eyes so when you close and reopen you are already there so this happened to me in this way and I was like I couldn't realize how I could have drive all that miles sleeping how could I have drive sleeping it's no possible when you see that way so as it is not possible to drive sleeping with the eyes closed I jumped it's very sure I jumped how could I have been driving with the eyes closed for 25 kilometers it's like very crazy with this I could have, have an accident I don't know so I really jumped that because I don't remember nothing from this driving it's like so I really jumped and this was the first teleportation and the second I didn't jump so I felt my body vibrate so much like and then 
something, some thought come to my to my head, to my mind, and then this vibration terminate. But I was feeling that I would jump in my own will, so it would be different. So I think there's very uh, a lot of kinds of teleportation, and one of them is when you are not realizing at all. So it happened. It just happens. And the other one is at your own will. And the, your own will is what everyone wants to happen. So this one I'm gonna explain you how. And this is, all, all this happens, could happen to you without you do any spiritual practice, but to do the will teleportation, then you need spiritual practice. Why? Because we are all spiritual. And in this kind of dimension, we lose. We, we are very attached to the material world. And this material world belongs to the third dimension. And when, we are, when you are in the third dimension, you cannot teleport at all. So even if you are on the fourth dimension, that's what I mentioned in other videos, so I'm gonna let the link. The fourth dimension, it's controlled by the mind. The mind is very powerful and it controls all your subconscious, and unconscious and consciousness and your ego, your thoughts and imagination, everything this and is the bridge between the fifth and the third. So the fifth dimension is where your soul resides. That's where, where your feelings reside. That's where you teleport and you have the perfect life. So fourth dimension, you are still filtering yourself from the third to go to the fifth. So it is the, the, the filter. And this fourth dimension has time, has space, and there's separation from love and uh, hate. So they, they have also light, dark, all this separation. Like the third dimension, but you can do, manifest a lot of things. But not really the powerful one, because the powerful one is instantaneous. So fifth dimension, there's no, it's timeless, spaceless and limitless. So that's where you start the perfect life. So teleportation will be as easy as fuck, okay, in fifth dimension. So that's where we want to reach. And I'm going to tell you how. Uh, we don't need to, to be in the fifth dimension to explain someone how to do it. And there's some principles we have to follow that is the laws of the universe. I don't like to call laws, but to understand, for you to understand this better like, that way. One of the law of the universe is that nobody understands this. For example, I'm doing this video and some people will comment in the video like saying, why don't you teleport right now? It's like, <laughs> really man, <It's, laughs> you cannot do anything, someone ah, recla reclamate. It's like crazy. Look, just listen this law and then you, you will understand for all your life how this fucking shit works, man. Look, one of the first ones is never prove to the next one the things you can do. For example, if you know how to tele teleport or to send a telepathy message or do some superhuman power thing, Superman, I don't know, you cannot prove the other to, for example, you cannot prove to the other like, hey, look what I do, I know how to do it. Like, you are, you are misguiding what the, what the universe actually is. Because, for example, when we say universe or God, it's the same thing. God, uh, he doesn't need to prove himself to be God, because he's all there is. So, if you prove yourself, you're gonna put the universe in just one thing that it is not, because the universe is everything, is the whole. So you're gonna put him in just one thing and you're gonna fail, because the universe is not that, it's everything. So, you're gonna make a judgment over it, because you say, hey, look, look at me, I know how to do this, I'm better than you. So you're gonna fail. Because the you can do one one time, but you're gonna lose the power. That's why you don't see in the television or in in your sites, like if you search in the, you don't see people doing these kind of things, because they know this law. This law is for everyone. You can do one time, but after you can die or you can lose your powers. So <laughs> never do, never prove yourself. You can prove to yourself, but not to others. So, if you share your power to the next one, 
make sure you are not making concurrence or doing better than him because everyone is doing the best they can so you cannot prove themselves so you can only show themselves how to do it in a form of reuniting everyone as love there you are correct so for example hey let's do it everyone this let's concentrate our power and do it but not like hey i'm better than you look uh, look I'm the only one I can do it, so you're gonna lose, you're gonna fail. And another law is you cannot manipulate the universe, you cannot manipulate your mind. So your mind, for a lot of people, it's the best they can do it, but also for a lot of people it's the trouble, because it cannot, it, it doesn't let you go to your feelings, but it's not true. You just have to be one with your mind because you cannot free him or you cannot destroy the ego or destroy the mind. No, you have to be one with them. So this is a lesson. The mind, you have to be one with them. And to, to be one with the mind, you just have to focus in one thing at, all, uh, at time. What that means is if, ta if mind has time and space and some limits, your mind doesn't believe you can teleport. So. The only way you can teleport using your mind is to use your feelings. So, because your feelings uh, manifest instantaneous. And your mind needs time to manifest. So, because your mind reacts what you act. So, your feelings act and your mind react over it. So, what your feelings do instantaneous, the mind is going to see... Ah, and then mix, you know? So... You have to be one with your mind with just one thought. So you, do, you don't let other thoughts come in. So you focus just in teleportation, day and night, day and night, day and night, and practice the same thing with your feelings. And then you're gonna, you're gonna fuse your fifth dimension, which is the feelings, with your mind and with your third dimensional body, and will become a fusion and you teleport. So, uh, <coughs> You cannot manipulate, so you have to be always truthful. You have to be the true, the truth, okay? So you cannot make things like to get something from it. So for example, you help somebody to get something in back from him. No, this is, this is one of the law of the universe. You cannot, you cannot uh, manipulate that. You cannot lie to yourself, but everything is true because you already had experienced that in somehow and we are we are here to do always the truth because your mind knows all the truth okay and you cannot lie to your mind and to your feelings because your feelings are the truth so follow all the time the truth and another law i cannot mention right now because it will come as your as your um, progress okay maybe i'm not remember right now but i think there's another one but uh, you you're gonna get it okay because this i will i i didn't listen from somebody i just got from my feelings okay <coughs> so to do this we gotta meditate in this meditation you make a deep breath all all from your nose and it's better you do in a quiet place, you can do in nature, but I prefer to do at night, so you choose, okay? And without lights. If there's the sunlight, then it's different, but try to be in the dark. That's why a lot of masters have meditated in the, in the caverns, in the caves. So, you start this meditation and you clear your mind by focusing on your breath, but let your breath breathe, not don't press the breath just watch the breath and be one with the breath okay and once you are on this current you you're gonna travel yourself to your feelings so to your belly not to your to your head and this is how it started to change my meditation because if we want to achieve the fifth dimension to start our perfect life and to, to be to activate our perfect human being to be one with our soul as our higher self we have to enter the fifth dimension still living on the third dimension 
But your feelings are here. You feel here, not here. Here is your head where control all the thoughts and imagination and all this. And that's why many of my meditations, of meditating so much sometimes, it started to hurt my head. Then I said, whoa, 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 I cannot even meditate. And now that I'm concentrating here on the feelings, on the belly, it started to change everything and started to vibrate my body. So that's where our soul resides. That's the, the secret. So you meditate focusing on your belly, on your feelings. Imaginate going to the fifth dimension where you're going to meet your higher self, your soul, here on the feelings. So you are, you are like... Uh, not going to the mind and going to your fifth dimension. So you are not going to the fourth dimension. You are going direct, direct to the fifth dimension. And this will cause an impact on your body and mind and soul, which allows you to start to receive energy from your soul. And so you're going to start to receive message. And even if you don't teleport in the, in the first time, you're going to do it with... Uh, you're going to have to to follow the flow because even if your feelings your soul doesn't is timeless and spaceless and limitless you still have your mind so you are transcending your mind to be out of your mind and be one with the soul that's the fucking secret secret man so just do this belly meditation or oh, i call a new name so belly meditation it is deep breaths till you are very relaxed and then watch your breath and imaginate going to the belly so you don't have nothing at all with the mind you don't care about uh, thought and you go to the belly and wherever thought it comes you you watch the breath and then watch the belly so in the meanwhile you watching your breath you go to the belly so you imaginate yourself like in a space travel through a tunnel and which this light in the end is your belly which is don't imagine the belly physically but imagine your higher self which is here down it's good to know that you have to uh, accept it and put it in your in your way of meditation that it is in the belly but not in don't imagine the belly on its own just imagine that the local you are going is here because it will tell you that you are on the feelings and not on your mind. So we have to be out of, your, uh, out, out of our minds to teleport, to allow to teleport or to allow to enter the fifth dimension. We have to be out of, uh, out of the mind, man. That's for, sh for sure, man. Because the mind cannot accept or understand the teleportation. So once you do it, the mind will start to believe because you cannot lie to your mind. So your soul does teleportation instantaneous all the time. It is the, their way of travel. It's the time travel on its own and the mind not. So you, by uh, making a first teleportation, your mind will start to believe. So that's where I, what I, I have told to my mind that that time I teleported with the body physically so that my mind starts to accept this idea. So now I'm going only on the feelings because you have to be the feelings first and then the mind. So that's the problem of many people. They stay on the fourth dimension, this black magician and all these people that, that control all our world through the Illuminati and all this, they are all stuck in this fourth dimension because the fourth dimension has the higher and the lower and they are on the lower part so they can do extraordinary things of course they can cross things through the body and don't feel any pain but it's because they have controlled the mind but not they not they didn't enter the love of the fourth dimension and not also the feelings that is the fifth dimension so they are there stuck and they don't accept the whole there is love okay and that's the the problem that i don't want you to go to stay there if it's your um, deepest desire to be there then okay go for it you have the the, the way how to do it <coughs> but if not don't go there because if you want to return or something it will be very hard so you have to accept the enlightenment love of all there is and 
Ah, one of the laws that I really love, this one, is forgive everything, accept everything, and love everything. By accepting everything, does, it means that you don't judge anything. So you accept everything. But you are not following everything. So that mean, doesn't mean by accepting everything, you are not following these things. For example, you accept, if you don't smoke, and you accept someone smoking, doesn't mean that you are following him to smoke. So you are accepting because it exists. So you are, the all there is ex exists, accepting. But doesn't mean you are following that. So by accepting and forgiving everything, you are not judging. So you are the all there is that exists right now, accepting everything like nature. And then love everything is the all there is and all there is not. And this is the principal law. Because to teleport, you have to accept yourself, to accept the nature you are going in and going out and all this. So you cannot, for example, if someone teleports to you right now and you are scary, then that means you don't accept everything. You are like, Ooh. So the only enemies of the human being is <coughs> fear and guilt. This is the only enemies. So forget these things. You are more than that, okay? And that's the technique. So I hope you guys enjoy and It was a cold winter day. Surrender was continuous for 11 straight days at a level of consciousness that had never been reached previously, not even during psychoanalysis. It had to do with the ego's very basis of survival and its identification as an individual. It had to do with how we experience our own existence and the desire to experience our own beingness. As the days went by, the process seemed endless. A doubt surfaced. Was this attempting the impossible? It became clear that the purpose of that doubt itself was a defense mechanism. It was relinquished, and the surrender continued at great depth. Then, entering a restaurant on that cold, rainy Sunday afternoon, sitting down alone at the table, suddenly the world was miraculously transformed. A profound sense of inner stillness and peace occurred. It was greater than anything imaginable. The experience was beyond time. In fact, time had no meaning whatsoever nor did space exist in the way in which we commonly experience it. All things were connected. There was only one life expressing itself with one self through all living things. There was no identification with the body and no interest in it. It was no longer any more interesting than any other body in the room. All emotions and events were interconnected, and all phenomena occurred because each thing was manifesting its own inner nature spontaneously, as though movement and growth were the spontaneous unfolding of potential. There was a rock-like quality to the imperturbable stillness. It was obvious that the real self was invisible, without beginning, without end, and that there had been only a transitory identification with the body and the story that went with the identification as an individual. It seemed very strange that one could previously have thought that one was an isolated body separate from others, with a limited beginning and a finite ending. The thought seemed absurd. There was no longer any feeling of a separate self, and the pronoun I disappeared and became meaningless. Instead, there was the awareness of being all things. It had always been and always would be. True beingness stood outside of time. The period of time that the body had been on earth seemed like a split second during which the truth of timeless identity had been forgotten due to being blinded by the smaller self. Then how it had happened revealed itself. There had been a wishful thought to experience separate existence, and this wishful thought had manifested itself as the individual person with an individual identity and a physical body to go with it. The interconnectedness of all things was starkly obvious. It was the holographic universe as described by the Buddha and by modern advanced theoretical physics, 
both of whom agree as to the intrinsic nature of the universe. Because everything was perfect, there was nothing to wish for, nothing to desire, nothing to create, and nothing to become. There was only that, the very essence of beingness out of which existence arises. That beingness is the source of existence, yet curiously, not its cause. There was a profound familiarity to the awareness. It was as though one had always known it, as if one were home at last. There were no emotions or feelings. There was an unawareness of sensations. Even though they seemed to go on, they were no longer personal or of concern. By way of experimentation, a thought was held for a split second to see what would happen. Almost instantly, there was an effect in the physical world. The thought of butter or coffee, for instance, resulted in the waiters coming over immediately with the items, and yet no word had been spoken. No words seemed necessary. Communication occurred with anyone on a level of silence. The body drove the car to a meeting that evening where no one noticed anything different. Everyone seemed to be intensely alive. Their aliveness shone forth from their beingness, and the self, which was the same for all, shone forth through their eyes. The body spoke to others, spontaneously carrying on normal conversations and behaving in its usual way. At the time, the body seemed like a karmic wind-up toy run by all of its accustomed patterns and programs, not needing any attention in the slightest. It seemed to know what to do and did it very effectively and effortlessly. All conversations and interactions were merely witnessed as phenomena, not directed. It seemed like a strange vanity to have once believed that there had been a small self as the author of the body's actions. In reality, the body was at the effect of the universe, and there had never been a doer of its actions. Phenomena were as vibrations of the mind that had no separate existence or reality. There was allness only. Only that oneness actually existed. The next afternoon a thought arose. Now that the way to reality had been revealed, there could be a return to the consciousness of being that individual person which had formerly been accepted as real. Just as the air in the room does not experience the contents of the room, there was no longer an I that experienced my own existence. In that space, there was no I to experience the I am. To return to individual consciousness meant that a choice would have to be made. In truth, the choice made itself, for there was no I to make a decision. The desire to experience the individual self became re-energized on its own. The option of letting it go was present, but there was the return of memory of things yet to be finished in the world. As the sense of I-ness returned, the choices were witnessed, not actively decided. The process of returning was taking place. It could be allowed or it could be let go. It was allowed, and so the process of return continued. When the next morning dawned, the return was complete, but now with a different sense of personal identity. The truth of the self had been revealed. The responsibility for having chosen to experience life once again as an individual was accepted, yet without being at the effect of a belief in individual existence. In fact, by conscious choosing, there was complete responsibility for it. Experientially, all of this happened autonomously. In this channeled transmission, I enter into an expansive, transformative and activating exploration of interdimensional dialogue, discussing the mechanics of Stargate Ascension. This cutting-edge information holds key codes, maps and coordinates for the starseeds on Earth. As they go through this process of DNA reconstruction and regrouping of cosmic memory themselves. The significant codex of information is downloaded to the reader. 
as they, through this sacred text, are called by the Dragon, Excalibur, Crystalline Light Geometry, Atlantis and the Emerald Flame. Shapeshifters of Earth, we have called you forth. You have called yourself forth through the activated aligned zero point field blueprints that shine like neon blue lights within the plasmic regions of your space time. The timeline for your ascension is not a linear one, but is cyclical as a never ending upward moving stairway. A crystalline ladder to the stars, if you will. This time period is available constantly when one takes themselves outside of linear time and geological material matter. It is as a pulse across the waters, if you will. A natural frequency of rainbow photonic healing light of such intentioned thought that holds the pattern that is interpreted as upgrade and return to the organic structure within positive polarization. This stream of pulsing thought affects all in its path, creating positively polarized experience and preventing the growth of that which is intentioned through the negative polarization. This grows in strength as it counteracts also the new electromagnetic frequencies of your new internet wideband microwave streams that you call 5G, drawing down the frequency into a lower bandwidth and thus expanding the bioplasmic DNA frequency codes so they act as barriers, shields and mirrors to this 5G broadcast, creating a human template that can withstand this onslaught of misdirected polarized particles. With intention, trust and heart-opened knowing, the global plans of enslaving humanity again through yet another unseen net shall not come to fruition. And it is thus through newly activated bioplasmic DNA fields within the positively oriented individuals within the medical profession that shall create the change from the inside to return to what was or downgrade the power lines and campaign and hold high the banners for the health and future of humanity. It is the bioplasma fields within the galactic grid structure and matching DNA configuration that begin this most important transition upon your planet. It is as thus. The more the service to self structure does push its agenda, the more the service to others polarized light does gain in strength until it becomes more brilliant than the human eye can see. Yet it is seen. It is seen by those who hold the celestine filled pineal gland, the crystal river of light sight, you know as sixth sense, clairvoyance, shamanic vision, psychic inner looking glass technology. They see the neon lights, and shall feel them as the etheric burn of transcendent, illuminated, enlightened Kundalini fire. For have you not been called to the light, to know the light, and to understand the light? Do not the phrases bioplasmic field, crystalline configuration, and celestine DMT, neon color grids and networks, fill you with the excitement, joys and inner tingles of absolute resonation. These are the callings to the destiny, to the blueprints and to the knowings that you perceive as memories. Processing is not needed, although it occurs 
within the higher male focused mind, which is the energetic broadcast signal from the pineal gland. This is where the processing lies, and this is a male energetic, that which we call the sacred masculine. For the intrinsic knowing without the processing, this occurs within the higher female focused heart, which is the energetic broadcast signal from the higher heart. This is the flowing knowing of resonance. This is a female energetic and that which we call the divine feminine. The merge between the two, the divine marriage or sacred hand fasting, occurs in beating cyclical rhythm to that which has gone before. At the time of the Sawain gateway, you approach. The time you play with your neon plastic toys of Halloween, little knowing of the neon glow that grows and glows within you all. We are not saying this is a Gregorian calendar moment. For this cyclical journey is beyond the linear and beyond all calendar, beyond all date. This is a moment of consciousness, drawing you together as you raise in critical mass through the neon DNA glow at the time of the Samhain gateway. This is a portal, not a date. This is a stargate, not one moment in time. We give to you the luminescent Samhain Stargate, that is the collective consciousness of humanity's seed points into critical mass for the neon glow within the DNA fields, the physiological light body that shall indeed show itself in full physical form. This, dear starseeds, is your garment of many colours that has been long prophesied and long awaited. We suggest anything crystalline in nature as the higher amplification, so crystals, white and blue, and all colours that appear to you as luminescent in their nature. Lighting of the candles is most significant and holds much power at this time, for this creates the flame and the flame is light. At this time, the luminescent flame is light, and it is the luminescent flame that shall flourish amongst you. Any tool you deem worthy, that holds your interest, your joy, and your thought, can hold sway as a power tool at this time. Be they picture, stone, object or talisman, jewellery, clothing or natural structure as in leaf, branch, twig or charged water from the wells that run along the dragon lines of the land, actions that honour the land or law as in ancient law or folklore, we refer not to the legal system here, actions that honour the land or law will add much power boost of signal to the luminescent bioplasmic DNA field configuration at this time, and aid to Gaia's knights sweeping the waters of your planet, cleansing everything in their wake, and replacing negative intentioned preset action into positive intentioned preset action. Such actions are those that bring together the rituals of the sacred marriage, the male and female twin flames that take sacred vows upon this day. We mean not just biologically born males and females, or heterosexually oriented individuals. We mean all couples who hold love in their hearts for each other, regardless of gender, gender expression, or sexual orientation. Each couple is the divine expression of source as they stand as the twin flame and add to the bliss-charged love that now feeds into a system of neoplasma bioplasma organisms that are also known as starseeds or angels on earth. 
Beyond the couple, there are those who express love as the trinity or as the group, and each hold power activations at the time of the luminescent Samhain Stargate critical mass seeds into bioplasma light body. Ritual, party, celebration, wedding, dancing, spell casting, meditation, yoga or prayer. Your practice and ceremony adds to the power of the true light at this time. And it is this luminescent, fluorescent, bioplasmic light that is pure thought made matter that shall change your world. Shine your lights, dear starseeds. We say to you, glow, children of Gaia, glow, glow, glow. We are the white-winged collective consciousness of nine. <laughs>